Hello, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Milica. I'm Bibi Digital on Twitter. I'm a contractor for Google, and I work on this website called web.dev, where I write about performance and developer tools. So mostly stuff that has been talked about today already by Ilya in the keynote and by Prashant. So how to cut your bundle size, how to make your application more responsive, improve metrics like time to interactive. If that's stuff you care about, and I really think you all should care about that, you should come talk to me later after the talk. I'm also a Mozilla tech speaker, and I was an intern at Mozilla on a browser engine called Servo. Parts of Servo are what makes Firefox fast today. Servo is fast because it can do a lot of things in parallel. It can do a lot of things in parallel because it was written in Rust. Rust is a cool new systems programming language, kind of like C or C++, but with memory safety. So I got to learn a little bit of Rust a while back, and I really liked it, but I am a web developer, and I really love the web. This was at the time when WebAssembly had just landed in the browsers in 2017, so I decided to learn more about it. Ilya talked about issues with JavaScript and mentioned WebAssembly in that context, which WebAssembly is a way to run code other than JavaScript in the browsers. I want to talk to you about how we got to this point and how exactly is WebAssembly different than JavaScript. I'll explain the reasons why we need it and what does it mean for the future of web development. Chances are you already came across WebAssembly in the wild and you weren't even aware. I'll show you some cool examples and some practical ones, so let's get started. In every browser, whether you use Chrome, Firefox, or Safari, code is interpreted and executed by a JavaScript engine, which until recently used to run only JavaScript. But what about C, C++, or Rust? As we know, JavaScript is just not ideal for every task we want to perform. That's where WebAssembly steps in. You do not write WebAssembly. You compile other languages to WebAssembly. But why would you want to do that? Why do we need WebAssembly? The short answer is performance. And there are a lot of cases where performance is really important, but let's start with the most obvious one. And that's video games. Some of the very first WebAssembly demos were video games. In 2017, Unity Engine built tanks that you could play in the browser. Last year, someone ported Doom 3 to the browser. And then Epic made a short WebAssembly demo that was a, an interactive Japanese Zen garden. That Zen garden had uh, fluttering butterflies, falling leaves, cherry blossom, things like that require lots of mathematics and careful memory management. You have to implement physics, and you have to constantly calculate positions of many, many pixels. Video games also often have to handle physics, uh, audio and video, and implement artificial intelligence. That's hard work, and it requires a high degree of performance. And that kind of performance is just hard to get from JavaScript. This is a screenshot of the very first website that Tim Berners-Lee made. At that time, web was mostly text and links. So JavaScript was meant to bring some interactivity to the web. It was designed to be easy to learn and easy to write. But it wasn't designed to be fast. Now, over the years, browsers added optimizations in the way they interpret JavaScript that brought major performance improvements. As it got faster, the list of things you can do in the browser started expanding. We got new APIs, and apps that were previously desktop only started coming to the web. Ilya also mentioned Gmail, which is a perfect example. Now, today, you add the documents in the browser, and you send email from the browser, and you don't even think about it. But there are still areas where performance is a struggle. Now, video games were an early goal for WebAssembly 
Because being able to reach that level of performance means opening the doors to many other applications on the web. Now, think about other cases where you use software outside of the browser that are not video games. For example, video editing. Or maybe music production. And there are many more, like 3D rendering, virtual reality or augmented reality, CAD applications, image recognition, and the list goes on and on. But why do we want all that on the web? Why is the web so attractive? I'd say that the beauty of the web is that it's kind of like magic. It just works everywhere. There's no download. There's no installation. In one click, apps are just delivered to you wherever. And then there's safety. Opening websites is just safer than running random binaries. Browsers have sandboxes, which isolate the code that's running them from messing with your system's memory. So when you visit a website, you never think twice. But you wouldn't just download the random binary and run it on your computer. And my favorite thing is the ease of sharing. Links are just clickable strings that you can put everywhere. And we all know that's not how app stores work. So web is a universal platform that makes your application available on almost any device. For us developers, that means a single code base, and it makes updates easy. Because of these things, we went from a hypertext and a simple scripting language to a platform filled with many powerful applications. But it was still powered by a simple scripting language that just wasn't designed to do all of that in the first place. So what does WebAssembly bring to the table? I'll focus on three things. Speed, portability, and flexibility. Let's talk about speed first. WebAssembly is a low-level binary format. It has a textual format that's kind of easy to read. You could write it by hand, but it's really meant for debugging. The binary format is what gets delivered to the browser. Now, binaries are smaller than textual files. That makes them faster to download, and this is really important on slow networks. Now, the fact that JavaScript is text means it requires parsing. And transforming plain text into binary format involves quite a few steps. There's lexing, tokenizing, taking that into abstract syntax tree, and then turning that into binary format. Yeah, I, I can tell. We try to fix it. <laughs> OK. Let's try. OK. Oh, much better. Thank you. <laughs> OK. And now, remember that WebAssembly is a binary format? That means no parsing, only decoding, which happens much faster. <laughs> what? If I like turn it down, yeah. then it's better? OK, I have, I have to breathe. Like, I, I can't help with that. OK. Now, other things that make WebAssembly faster. JavaScript is a dynamically typed language. When you write x plus 1, you don't have to specify what x is. It could be a string, an object, a number. And you don't also don't have to compile that code. You just give it to the browser to figure it out. Now, this makes it fast and easy to write. But it also means that the browser has to do a lot more work. It has to figure out the types and then optimize the code as it runs on your page. And often it makes wrong assumptions and has to optimize things multiple times. Now, WebAssembly is statically typed, so the engine doesn't need to speculate during uh, compilation about what types are you going to use. And most of optimizations happen before it even gets to the browser in the initial compilation stuff. And another thing that gives WebAssembly speed boost is streaming compilation. Kind of like you can watch YouTube video as it's being downloaded. The same way browser co compiles WebAssembly, 
as it's being downloaded. So by the time file is finished downloading, it's ready to run. All of this makes WebAssembly fast, but it's not like JavaScript can be fast. The thing is, writing fast JavaScript usually involves a lot of effort and knowing how browsers optimize things. And the thing about optimizations is that they are not the same in every browser. So if you really know how V8 works and you optimize for V8, that code might run slowly in Firefox's SpiderMonkey. What WebAssembly gives you is reliable performance. I think that's what makes it so attractive. And then there's portability. How to take a thing from one place to the other and have it just work. This was one of the main goals in designing WebAssembly. So let's go over that design really quickly. OK, this is just so we're all on the same page. Assembly typically refers to humanly readable languages that are similar to machine code. Machine code is what your processor understands, a bunch of numbers. Every high-level programming language gets translated down to machine code in order to run on the processors. Different kinds of processor architectures need different machine codes and different assembly for each of them. Now, if you've been following closely, WebAssembly is not quite an assembly language. That's because it's not meant for any specific machine. It's for the browser. And when you write code for the browser, you don't know what kind of machine it's going to run on. So WebAssembly is a language for a conceptual machine that's like the least common denominator of popular real-world hardware. When the browser downloads WebAssembly code, it can quickly turn it into any machine's assembly. Now, to run an app on a device, it has to be compatible with the browser's processor architecture and operating system. That means compiling code for every combination of browser and of processor architecture and operating system that you want to support. Now, with WebAssembly, there's only one compilation step, and your app will run in every modern browser. Now, good use cases for this are porting legacy applications or open source libraries. You can have a single code base for multiple platforms. C++ is a really good choice for that because it's supported practically everywhere, even iOS and Android. And another exciting thing is the flexibility that WebAssembly brings in writing for the web. Until now, JS was the only supported language, but now we can just choose different languages for things that we want to try on the web. And developers who don't know JavaScript can now write code for the web which means more web developers, more diversity, and more possibilities. WebAssembly compiles into modules that you can use in your web application. They have imports and exports that allow you to work with them, like with regular JavaScript objects. You can call WebAssembly functions in JavaScript code, and you can call JavaScript functions in WebAssembly code. So WebAssembly is really not a replacement for JavaScript. It's meant to work alongside JavaScript. JavaScript is really good at a lot of stuff. New frameworks are very efficient at DOM manipulation, and sticking to pure JavaScript is still probably going to be both faster and easier in a lot of cases. But because they work together, you can write some parts in JavaScript, like user interface, and then use WebAssembly for some core functionalities in your application that you require high performance. Or if you have existing bottlenecks in your applications that you just couldn't optimize until now, maybe WebAssembly can allow you to use a language that's better suited for your problem. It really comes down to using the right tool for the job. Fully supported languages today are C, C++, and Rust, but many others are in the works. .NET and Go already shipped pretty decent support. Now, one language that's really interesting to me is TypeScript. AssemblyScript is a tool that allows you to take TypeScript programs and compile them to WebAssembly. Now, you can just take any TypeScript. It has to be strictly typed. I think this is awesome because as a web developer, 
even though I know a little bit of Rust, I'm still better at JavaScript. And I certainly don't expect other JavaScript developers to just go out and learn C++ or Rust. But TypeScript is something that most of people have at least tried or are easy to get familiar with. So this allows you, JS developers, to try WebAssembly easily and see what kind of benefits it can bring. Moving on to how this actually works. You, of course, need a tool to compile WebAssembly. Compilation step is something that's traditionally not been a thing that we had to deal with, but nowadays that's kind of over with Webpack and Babel and everything. So anyway, for WebAssembly, there's this really old and modular compiler called LLVM, which can be made to work with lots of different languages. But for compiling C or C++, you can use a simpler tool that's based on LLVM that's called mscripten. Now, Rust Nightly has its own compiler named Rust C that can output WebAssembly directly. And Wasm Pack is a cool companion that can package your modules. When you compile a C file with mscripten, what you get is a WebAssembly module and HTML and JavaScript files. Now, you need HTML and JS because, as Ilya mentioned, WebAssembly doesn't have direct access to the DOM and to other platform APIs like Web Audio or WebGL. To work with any of these, and even to display the output of your WASM program, you have to go through JS. mscripten will make boilerplate JavaScript code that can do that for you, and then in HTML, you load that JavaScript, and you can output your program in a canvas or a text area element. So let's go through the simplest example. MCC is an scripting command that generates the file that you need. Hello C would be your source program written in C. Vasm equals one means you want to output WebAssembly module, and then dash O, hello HTML, is your output file. Vasm BindGen is a tool which makes this a little bit easier for Rust programs, but still, it's a bit of a hassle. And there are a couple more tricky things about WebAssembly. There are only four types, and all of them are numbers. So this means that passing more complex data between JavaScript and WebAssembly is not as easy. For example, if you want to take string and pass it, you have to encode it into an array of numbers and pass a pointer to it. It also doesn't have direct access to JavaScript variables, and making a lot of calls through JavaScript is just not very fast in all browsers. Firefox did a really good job with speeding that up, but br other browsers still have work to do. So for now, good advice is to use WebAssembly to offload big chunks of work. This means like resource-hungry tasks that can be done in isolation, for example, resizing an image or similar. Now, you might be wondering if people are using this in production today. And the answer is yes. If you've ever tried to upload a huge raw image to Facebook, it probably went through WebAssembly code. This is because Facebook is using this old C library called libjpg, and it handles image compression in these cases. That library is old almost 40 years. And on Wikipedia, if you ever played a video or an audio file, they also use open source codecs compiled to WebAssembly. And then there's Kia. It's an open source graphics library written in C++, which now runs on WebAssembly. Uh, Canvas Kit provides you a playground for testing new Canvas and SVG APIs in the browser powered by this library. Now, Squish is an app from Google team that also handles comp image compression. It supports several formats, such as MozJPEG, PNG, or WebP. Now, these compression algorithms are all implemented in WebAssembly, but the UI for this app is written in Preact. So it's really responsive and fast. If you want to try it, you can just go to this link and try it even from your cell phone. And other big applications are using WebAssembly too. 
So Figma is an interface design tool that allows easy collaboration for designers. You can use it from the browsers. It's mostly written in C++. It has a 2D WebGL rendering engine, and it can handle really large documents. The UI, again, is in TypeScript and React. AutoCAD is a design software for engineers. They use it to make floor plans or piping designs. It's been around for a really long time, I think maybe 35 years longer than the web itself. And two years ago, uh, they took their huge C++ code base and compiled it to WebAssembly and just made it available on the web. That's like, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of lines of code that they didn't have to rewrite. And people are also doing weird stuff. Someone ported Windows 2000, so now you have an operating system in the browser. And you can actually play pinball in it. Yeah, all right. You should all go and try it. WebAssembly is supported in all major browsers since 2017. There's a standards committee, and they are all working together on bringing new features. And this is really different from how things were in the past. Getting everyone to play along and establish standards is not an easy thing. Some of you may remember these things like Flash or Java applets, but younger crowd here probably never saw this. And that's because these technologies are dead. They were pushed by competing companies, and they were actually never made a web standard. So WebAssembly having a standards committee means it's part of a web platform, and it integrates cleanly with other web standards. So I'm pretty sure this means a bright future for it. So what are the benefits for JavaScript developers here? I think this integration with JavaScript makes JavaScript more powerful because it makes available all the best modules from different languages for JavaScript developers. JavaScript, in part, expanded so much because of NPM and ease of distributing modules. Now, there are already around 600 WebAssembly modules on NPM. This means that WebAssembly will also be easy to distribute. And what if you really don't think you're going to need this? You have absolutely no plans to make a video game or next Photoshop or anything. Well, you can still benefit from WebAssembly and speed boosts that it brings through improved libraries and developer tools. This is already happening. Firefox DevTools and Webpack are both using Source Maps library, which was rewritten in Rust and then compiled to WebAssembly. This rewrite made it 11 times faster, and we're all using this already today. As for the frameworks, Ember is already investigating WebAssembly implementation of its Glimmer engine. And then some React features, too, could be improved if they were rewritten, for example, in Rust. Like the DOM diffing algorithm could be easily parallelized in a different language. What else is there? What else can WebAssembly do? It's going beyond the browser. WebAssembly today runs in browser engines, but really it's a language for conceptual machine, which means you can create other runtimes that will support WebAssembly and work on different operating systems. And this is exactly what's happening. Fastly and Cloudflare now run WebAssembly in the cloud. And there's also Wasmer, which is a universal WebAssembly runtime that supports many different languages. Now, WebAssembly obviously works, but it's going to get even better. Let's see what lies ahead. Browsers are already working on new features. Support for threading is coming. It's already available in Chrome in Origin Trial, and it's also already been implemented in Firefox. It's just not enabled yet. Uh, support for garbage collection is planned sometime next year. 
And this will make it easier to support languages like Java or Go. And another important goal is creating debugging tools which support source maps. This will allow developers to easily map their WebAssembly code to the source code. And soon enough, you will be able to import these modules just like any other module using the tag script with type module. Now, because this is Vinita JS, I just want to reiterate that JavaScript is a great language. It's flexible enough to build almost anything. It will still have its place in web development. Just those few gaps that it can't handle well will now be handled by different languages compiled to WebAssembly. It's really not the end of JavaScript. I think it's a new beginning for the web. OK. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions whatsoever about WebAssembly or web performance in general, you should just come and find me after the talks because I know it's getting late and everyone wants to party. So I'll just leave the stage for Paul. Yeah. And if you really want to learn more about how WebAssembly works, you should check out Code Cartoons by Lynn Clark. And if you want to maybe follow my presentation at a slower pace, you can check out my article, WebAssembly, how and why. I'm really looking forward to meeting you all later. Thank you again for your attention and have a great time at the party. Okay.